So if you were here uh, this time last year, you may remember that Reverend Allison told us a story about Sophie and her red marker. Sophie was feeling sad about not being able to go to her UU church in person, and she made some beautiful drawings of the things she loved about church with her red marker. Well, today we have a new story about Sophie and her red marker. Just like us, Sophie has been going to church online for a whole year now. And this last week, Sophie was feeling a little bit sad about that. Sophie's dad noticed that she seemed a little down. You're looking sad today, Sophie. What's up? He asked. I miss my friends at church. It's just not the same seeing their faces on the computer. And I get to go to school two days a week, but I wish I could see my school friends more too. Sophie replied, I wish the pandemic were over. I hear you, said her dad. I miss getting to see my friends too. And I miss singing in the choir. It's been a long year. It's okay to feel sad. But what should I do with all my sadness, dad? Said Sophie, drooping her shoulders. Why don't we draw together, said her dad. Let's draw all the things we feel sad about. So Sophie and her dad got out a piece of paper and started drawing together. Sophie used her red marker to draw a picture of her friends at church. Then she drew a birthday cake with eight candles on it. Because this year she missed getting to have a party for her eighth birthday. Then she drew people hugging. Because it had been such a long time since she had gotten to, to hug her grandparents. Her dad took a purple pen and he drew a picture of the choir singing. Next, he drew a coffee cup because he missed getting to chat with people over coffee after the service. And then he drew a suitcase. Because he missed getting to travel places with Sophie. That's a lot of sadness, said Sophie's dad as they finished drawing. How are you feeling now? A little better, said Sophie, but still pretty sad. There's a lot to feel sad about. But there were some good things this year too, right, Sophie? Said her dad. What if we add the things we are glad about to our drawing too? I guess there are some things, said Sophie. Like we video call grandma all the time now and we never used to do that. That's a great one. Let's see what else we can come up with. So Sophie picked up her red marker and drew a picture of a phone with her grandma calling on it. Then she drew their cat, Henry. Because she had gotten so many extra cuddles with Henry this year. He kept her company anytime she had to do school from home. Last, she drew a picture of the big tree down the block. Because she and her dad had taken a walk past that tree almost every day they were home at lunchtime. She loved getting to spend extra time with her dad. 
Sophie's dad took his purple pen and drew a mask because he was grateful for the way they protected everyone. Then he drew a computer. Because he was glad that they were still able to connect with people online. He was about to draw a picture of a tree when he noticed that Sophie had already done so. Hey, is that the tree down the block that we pass every time we take our lunchtime walk? He asked. It is, Sophie exclaimed. I was about to draw that too, said Sophie's dad. Those walks have been really special, haven't they? Yeah, Sophie replied. I can't wait to see if the tree has buds on it today. That will mean spring is really coming. Well, let's hang up our drawing and head out, suggested Sophie's dad. Sophie leapt to her feet and grabbed some magnets to hang up the drawing on the fridge. They both stood back and looked at the picture for a moment. There's a lot of sadness in this picture, but there's a lot of gladness too, said Sophie's dad. Thanks for drawing the year with me, Sophie. It was good to remember all the different feelings I had this year. I feel a little better now. How about you? Me too, said Sophie. And they headed out the door together. I wonder what you noticed about this story. I wonder what you would draw if you were drawing all the sadness of this year. I wonder what you would draw if you were drawing things you were grateful for. I wonder what it feels like for you to hold the sadness and the gratitude together. For Sophie and her dad, one of the biggest things that made them glad is that they had one another to help them get through this past year. In that spirit, we're going to hear a song by Nancy Cassidy called You Are Not Alone. It will be performed by Dan and Sarah Murphy. Out loud, there are no chains 
will be all right. You're not alone. I'm walking with you. You are not alone. I'm walking too. We're not alone. Love surrounds us. Hope and joy and freedom's light is in our hearts. We'll be all right. Gonna be all right. Hope and joy and freedom's light will be all right. Hope and joy and freedom's light is in our hearts. Hope and joy and freedom's light is in our hearts. Over the last few weeks, I've been seeing a lot of memories shared about when that moment was last March, when you knew that this pandemic was going to drastically change our lives. You might think that for me, it was the moment we decided to move church online, but actually it was a message that came later from my daughter's daycare, which basically never closes, announcing that they were shutting down for at least the next two weeks. That was the moment that my husband and I had to wrap our minds around the idea of reinventing all three of our jobs to work in an online only reality while trying to care for a toddler full time. Like so many other parents across the country and around the world, we started making elaborate schedules of who was on for childcare every hour of the day, trying to fit it all in and praying that a well-timed nap might cut us a little slack. One year later, our daughter has been back in daycare since January, but I still panic a little anytime I get a message from her teachers or the daycare center. The fear of losing that precious bit of help, especially now that there's a baby in the mix as well, is almost as strong as the fear of that making the choice to have her there will bring illness home to our family. This is the world that so many of us are living in one year later. Our minds and our bodies have been trained to respond with fear and worry to things that would have seemed completely mundane before the pandemic. We have been living for a full year with this heightened state of anxiety, worrying about our own health and the health of those we love. We have lost loved ones and had to grieve on our own. We have had to cope with massive changes in our daily lives, job losses, constant changes in school and childcare, changes in how we shop for groceries and how we socialize. And we have been so isolated, separated from one another because we love one another, seeking connection through screens and distanced outdoor hellos. We've been dealing with all of this in more isolation than most of us have known in our lives. And the decision fatigue has been overwhelming as we calculate risk each time we consider leaving the house. And we've been doing all of this for a full year or more. We have all of us lost something this year. Even those of us who count ourselves lucky, who try to count our blessings, whether big or small, we have not gotten out of this year unscathed. And one year later, we are weary. One year later, we still worry. One year later, we wonder what is next. Even my now almost three-year-old has started asking, 
is the pandemic over yet? There has been some reluctance, I think, to truly name how not fine we are all are in this moment. When we ask each other how we're doing, we still answer as we were taught somehow, I'm fine. Or sometimes when we're being a little bit more truthful, I'm pandemic fine. But the truth is we are overwhelmingly not fine. No matter how lucky or privileged we are, most of us are struggling in some way. And I want to give you permission today to name that. We are not fine. And that's okay. In fact, it's to be expected given the year that we've just had. The question for us one year later is not, how do we make ourselves fine? But instead, how do we keep going when we are weary? How do we keep going when we are weary? We start by taking things one day at a time. In the uncertainty of this past year, one day at a time has often been all that we can do. Perhaps if there is one thing that this pandemic has taught us, it is to live a little bit more in the moment. If we had thought a year ago when we gathered for the second time online to make home church corners together, that we would still be doing this one year later, most of us would not have been able to imagine making it this far. And yet here we are, we made it this far, one day at a time. In this weary time, whenever you hit a weary patch in your life, remember to be gentle with yourself. Remember that in addition to all the stuff of everyday life, you are holding a year's worth of fear and uncertainty. If you are not as productive as you think you should be, if your memory isn't as good as it once was, know that you are not the only one. This extended time of anxiety is literally taking a toll on our brains. It's taking up space. So give yourself a break. You are doing the very best that you can. And even in our weariness, there is hope, right? If we take the time to look for it. Every day as we hear in our text chat uh, during candles, more and more people are getting vaccinated. Back in November and December, when cases were skyrocketing, it seemed like there was no way out, no end in sight. Now we can sense a shift. We don't know quite where the end is or how close we are, but we're getting somewhere. We are rejoicing as our high-risk loved ones get the protection that we have yearned for. The CDC is telling vaccinated grandparents that they can hug their grandchildren. There are promises of vaccines for everyone by the summer. We are weary, but we are maybe beginning to trust that there will be an end. Hold on to this hope. We need it so much right now. And of course, as I've said ad nauseum this past year, all of this is easier if we do it together. Weariness alone is a heavy burden, but somehow being weary together makes it a little lighter. So keep reaching out to each other. Keep showing up for each other. Get on that Zoom call even though you can't stomach the thought of one more Zoom call. Go for a walk with a friend, even if it's 10 degrees colder than you ever would have thought acceptable for a walk pre-pandemic. We need one another. We are weary, my friends. We are weary, but we are still here. And we can keep going. We can do this hard thing. We can do it together. 
So this is the part where you need your candle and something to light it with. I'm gonna light my candle and go ahead and light yours. And as you light it, as you look at that flame, bring to mind all of those losses and challenges. You can just look at the flame of your candle and hold them in your own heart, or if you want to share them, you can type them into our chat box so that this community can hold our losses together. Some of us this year lost loved ones. Some of us lost our own health. Some of us lost the opportunity to see those we loved. We lost hugs and milestones. We lost the ability to sing together. Let's take a moment of quiet to sit with our grief, to hold together the grief of this gathered community. I'm going to ring our singing bowl once as we take some time. Together, we honor the losses, big and small, from this past year. Together, we hold the grief and pain, worry and fear. Together, we recognize the weight of this pandemic, the toll that it has taken on us all. When you are ready, blow out the flame of your candle. And watch the smoke rise away, releasing your grief to the care of this beloved community. By naming and honoring, by sharing the weight of our grief and fear, we let go a little, allowing ourselves to be held. I invite you to join me in singing there is a love. The words will be in the chat box. There is a love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love. There is a love holding all we Amid all the loss, there is inextricably intertwined a great deal of gratitude. So as we honor our losses, we honor too our gratitude. That gratitude may look a little different for each one of us, but we each have things that brought comfort and joy into our lives throughout this year. And so I invite you to look back on the year and think about what those things are for you. And as you reflect on this, 
pick up your little stone or whatever it is that you have that you can hold in your hand. If there's more than one of you, you can take turns holding the stone. As you hold it, maybe even rub it together between your hands. Warm up that stone with all of the joy and the gratitude from this last year. What were the things that helped you keep going when you were weary? What unexpected joy did you experience? How did you find comfort? Where did you find hope? If you'd like, again, you can add your answers into the chat box so that it might lift us all up. Gather up all of that gratitude and comfort and joy and hope and put it into your little stone. Hold it. Gather up the joy of time with loved ones, the joy of hope, the joy of books, sharing books with neighbors, the joy of winter hiking, the joy of collaboration, the joy of unexpected new friends, of spring weather, of life being a little simpler, of walking every single day of warm Sunday services here. Gather it all up. And take a breath with me. Center in your gratitude. Take a breath with me. Center in your joy. Take a breath with me. Center in hope. Take one more breath with me. And center in love. Take this stone filled with your gratitude, your joy, your hope, your love, and put it somewhere where it can remind you of all of those things. When you are feeling weary, you can pick it up and take a few centering breaths and feel the warmth of all that you put into that stone. I'm gonna put it back and we're gonna sing one more time. There is a love. There is a love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love. There of our chalice. 
but we carry that flame with us. We raise it high and we send its beacon through the sky. We keep it strong and shining through all the pain. Let that flame rise and grow. Let it light this world that you know. Let it glow and carry the flame. As you go out into the world, carry the flame. May it be so. I invite you now to join me in singing our song for parting, peace and joy. May peace and joy. 